Um, ja, ik is geen heel ding van soort, maar allemaal een paar keer meer als Einstein. En ja, ik had zo een paar rimpjes. Ik is bij jullie verder. Van dat ik uh, uh, iedereen mee voorgesteld heb, uh, zal ik zeggen: spoken word poetry. Was het voor mij iets anders, want omdat ik zo bij jullie <laughs> Zo so, uh, snacks, uh, liefde voor uh, hem. En daar was altijd voor mij gezegd: nee, weg broek van hem, man, dat is poetry. En ik was like, nou, maar ik smaak de rij, man. Zo. So, but anyway, um, wat ik eerst ga doen is een uh, uh, gedag wat ik uh, geschreven heb, is gebaseerd op een van Zapiro's uh, cartoons. Um, en die naam van het is Dankie van Niks. <laughs> Dankie vir niks Weer eens was ek niks gewees Nes tevore Behalve die keer was die rommel toch te mooi gekleed In een rommeling van mooie woorden. Ik moest die invloed vir my Want jy wil my Toespreek met sleetelwoorde wat gedagtes kon sluit. So ten slotte moest ik mijn oren toehou, want ik wou nog mijn verstand gebruik. Destijds het jy beloftes gewerk soos een bemoedigende klop aan die schouwer. Toe ik hulle aanvaar het, soos een Trojaanse per wat my later zou beroof van mijn vertrouwen. Diezelfde vertrouwen waarmee ik hier geschakeld heb, mis die rest van die land. Toen ons moet druk op die nummer, onbewust dat daar die gedrukkerij ons vingers lelijk zou verbreid. Maar wat ik graag wil zeggen is: dank je. Dank je dat die corruptie en transacties ons bankrekeningen nog steeds prop volgen. Zoals so schoolbanken. Tijdens schoolvakanties. En bij je dank je dat I voor ons hongergemeenschappen kon uitstaan en karakter, zodat so ons I eer kon voel, zoals die kos en ons koskassen. I heeft ons armes met hou die brinkan, hou die blinkan doorgevoerd. En I beloftes was maar net als politoer voor die prachtige teels en die asemromende luchtkastelen. Wat jullie gebouw het voor ons bedoel, zodat so ons al schitteren moest aan schou en dus niet moest stap over die vloer. Maar hoe kan ik die blank gedachte glanzen van wanneer daar stof op die grond wit lee en niks is op die lappen gebring? Ik besef nou dat I als voorzitter van ons landsbestuur met een leerlingslicentie in de politiek verkeer. Plus, I is het links voor en de rechter aan het bestuur. Zo so ik verstaan dus hoe kom volgelingen en cirkels beweeg. Zo, so, voor I weer eens met willen van beloftes waarop I ons rond meer reed. Met gevleelde toespraken kon beschermen, alsof het buitenbande is, zodat so hij aan die rol kan hou om een soort doende nog verder om die bos te leiden. Wil ik graag vragen, maar ook die dier alsjeblieft, ik wil uit. Mijn naam is voor jou aangezicht. Ik vaar zoals lucht wat zo so pas ingeazen is. Nou, ik is geplaatst in schrift. Woorden wat zo so saad bevrucht wat nou ter sprake is. Consonanten en vocale samenstellings. Ik laat hulle te samen staan op diezelfde parallelle. Horizontale assen. Als ik dit pas in dit heg, dan in mekaar las in dit vlieg. 
laat ek te sin, hulle spasies ris min, maak dit een sin, nou maak dit dis sin, wat sy dit nog altyd ek sy maas op vir sin, a swaad wat te sin, a klom skape gif bring, plaas my in a soort te klas wat vermoor en straf, som glo vast dat a boose macht, gee die woorde kracht, dis ek om as ek alleen die hoge sag, kom met gaves voor en dag, maar hulle nie met die brase vermoon ag, so, ek sal my verbeelding afdoen as ek ruime slak, van die penne grit, ek sal in jou keel en afspring, soos een eistervark, met penne uit en penne trait, al 111.000 die jou veel na buiten, sy sal leid so spin het van jylle reise, ek sal gedagtes met ruime buig, dier die melkweg op een lijn te skryf, want my pen is my ruimte tuig, ek tref om my na 11 mal dier die stere stelsel, so vinnig tyd laat het lyk, die wereld staan stil, en hulle gul boe jongse kind sien wat die vloei wat ek bring sy licht skroei en los blind skaak jou visie my gloei los is skim die heel al is my skade weer iets wat knoei binnen in maar vergelijk dit met een stofdeel in my boeier van kinds maar hoe kan dit wees dat boe jongse kind vir ons hoek en boe dier die ing wat hy penne laat bloei by die pin en baie sê dat my sin een moeilikheid bring lyk ek wil my eie mense uitroei as ek doen hulle teen mekaar in gluire geskoesels moet skrim maar ek wil het sy moet besef dat as sy troei doen dit slim versta het mooi om te snoei lyk het sy brik af maar om te groei moet hy dink so daar waar ek snui, weet daar broe die begin van een nieuwe vertakking en dis hoe ek die goeie inbring. En as hy weet wat werk is, sal jy die moeite bemin as hy sien wat broeis ons dit bring, as hy jou siel sproei in die sin. Maar nog steeds sien hulle my net as, boe jongse kind. Sainus, het een man Ok, die next piece wat jylle nou gaan sien Is net iets waar ek speel met woorde Is uitere, is dit met my? Ja, so het is een van my performances Wat ek gedoen het by die In Zing Poetry Sessions In Kaya Mandi Van Slipnet en so So, ja, en het is alfabet reinklits Maar het is net van A tot Z Ek het er echt nie gehad op strakkel nog een beetje aan die laatste op die einde, maar ok, as hulle thuis. Ei! Asem, arm, geer, asem, hoogende, atoomkracht, anker, anoniem, aan alle ap, alweer alle hoogsmacht. Amal gaan alfabetisch af, sê aan amateur, amba, artistiek, as ander gif, amal as alcohol, aan das.
uh, knowledge of self. So, basis waar het beteken vir my as MC, van het kom by hoe jy jyself verstaan en hoe het sy jou perception van wat rondom jou aangaan, is is vir my baie geestelike saak, want ek meen, ek is net hier, ek is gebore in die wereld in, en die myself te geleer ken het oor die jare, het ek net besef dat, ja, maar, so mens, hy is nie sikker goed wat sy kan doen, man, en ek meen, is goed wat ek self ontdek het, en wat ek ontdek het in myself, ek het raak gevat, van baie ander, en geleer, baie ander kunstenaar, en so, en, toe ek by raai besef en gekom het, dat, maar daar is sikker goed wat ek ook kan doen, ek meen, simpel goed, soos die melo vroeger gepraat het, van, waar, baie van ons is somtijds, ons is bang, om, sy weet, om sikker goed, te experiment met, ek meen, back in the day, ek gegaan en, ek het rondgeskarrel vir beats en ek het vir die katte gevraag en hulle was like met waro ok, 300 rand beat ek is like 300 rand beat sy is nog hier van die sy is nog hier van die kijkvlees en ek is like, ok, but respect hy is jou kunst, ek had die, die wegvat van jou nie maar, ek het die gestaan en ek kroon die verstaan en ek was like net, kijk hier man gebruik jou eie verstand en ek het gaat sit ek het programs gaat leer, ek het my self geskool, library toe gegat, ja, dag na dag gaat sit, en ek het my self geleer om sikere goed te doen, en ek meen aan die einde van die dag, het ek, like, begin een beats maak, daar is maar net een aspect van het, en ek het daar toe gevat, om, sal ek het so stel, om my self te empower, en ek meen, toe ek klaas met die, het, paar jaar terug, toe het ek, on a, Kuiper Wicker Records, het ek die opportunity toe gekryf met track te record en ek meen, het was alles my eie ander week die lyrike wat geskryf gewees het die beat wat geproduce was alles die ek het hy self gedoen so, in hy ops in hy sens kan ek sê dat die kennis wat ek nou weet van myself die knowledge wat ek het van self hoe ek vir anders kan wees, dat as hy hy implement as hy uitgaan en sy is gewillig om goed te doen, as hy in een sekere karier wil gaan, sy wil sy goals, wat sy graag wil achieve, dat het is moendlik, want aan die einde van die dag kost het net vir jouself om te gaan sit en vir jouself te vraag, hoe baie wil ek dat jy saam? Maar ja, die volgende gedag wat ek wil doen, ek sal nie sê, as gedag hier is, like a kapelle van die track wat ek geskryf het, en die naam van het is, Seer van Heiligheid. Een dag sal ek verkeer die ruim gebrek, terug na die Heer in veiligheid. Druppel van God nie meer, want ek skyn dan uit, vloei, volmaak, as die Seer van Heiligheid. Aan die begin was die woord, maar voor die woord was daar die meester die almachtige vader die hoogste en die eerste gehoor by die bekeerdes van die woord in die geskrewe gedof, dis my bekendstelling aan die methodes van die Heere maar realiteit was die betover dis en these toe dit my laat besef het, maar hy is steenwoordig in my weese in bloed en bene, in kromosome en al stene, tot in die leemte diep in die atome, in die gene, gebore in die vreemde, was te vore al oorlede, maar dier mitose en genese, toe weer gebore om te snewe, om te verhoog en dan te leer, waar het ek my verloor in die verkeerde, so dat ek hierdie keer kan recht sê, dier die opening verspene, en is my poging om te strewe op verhoog al in my skrede maar al doen ek hoe goed moet my nie beoog as een verhewe maar kom doop my as een spreker met die woord van my gemeente hoop hulle die keer stel ek hom volkome dan te vrede 
Jy dag sal ek verkeer in ruim gebreem. Terug. Jy dag sal ek verkeer in ruim gebreem. Terug na die Heer in veiligheid. Druppel van God nie meer. Want ek skyn dan uit. Vloei volmaak as die seer van heiligheid. Boodskappers van God het my possess vir my denkerskrag. So as een loop in die gedachte gang van Daniel den vir soots. Hy demonstreer keer in kracht waar hy Rembrandt te veer met koas. En hier die mensels van mental pracht. Engele treed het af met al beste intens en splas. Hulle vleerke gesteerd van af. Laat hy skulderie vij wat in die raam weer van sy leense pas. Want hy het die licht gesien as of sy sielse vensters die al vlenters was so dat jy kan sien in ruim hoe hy werkelijk die wereld glas. Kunstvaardig, as my woorde uit dig spreek, met my kunstvaardig na een hoor bevistig, ek wil die slim aanhuts, so as ons in spore terugkik, sal ons kom vind, daar is niks wat ons geloofse licht kan sluit in die speelsame deelname waar ons leer om te groei, en eensame weergave van die lewese vloei, moet ek weerstaan vir meer gaves wat die Heere laat broei, so ons beenstaan vir deurgaan na die eeuwige gloei, en soek in self, vir my die ja en amen afsteek, kry voedsel vir ek geestelik die tafels afdek, en as ek inderdaad die kool raak, vermag ek, kan dan terugkeer na my vader, as een volmaakte aspek. Eendag sal ek verkeer, die ruim gebrek, terug na die Heer, in veiligheid, druppel van God nie meer, want ek skyn dan uit, vloei volmaak, as die seer van heiligheid. Loskom hier, al weet ek nie meer, kan ek net een lekker ander klapje kreeg met julle? Is jy? Wees nog, smaak en lekker rai. van Lafitte is jou op, het my taal is hoe sa haal geveer ek schiet op die post is ek blaas jou in, laat van jou nees hoe spiet is, wat los is, nou staat so klein, sta wat met Lerito gebotst is, maar wie sê dat oos is, soos priesters en kosters, wat met gaves beskeer om oos, iets wat van God is, so iemand wat most is, die Jesus verlos is sal verstaan, hoe belangrijk die liefde vir oos is nog dat leef, vol een people is nog die iets is wat hot is, nog MC's, nog graffiti pieces en nog dig, as ons kom gebruik, haar opgereikt, ons even soos dokters, hou die klop in die hart, net soos die brief in die boxes, alles in, nou raak ons ook hier vir die kostelis, maar ons leen nog steeds honger as die brief in die box is, snak en droeg, en baat iets in die rakies van jou opbesits, al by maak skoon, of sy nou een biesem of mok is, as een brief van broes dokters, laat ons hier was nou op, Kom ons pak mekaar op Kom ons vlieg jy aan die kop Dis kom ons maak mekaar skeek Kry die kies by die loksmit Sluit al die dere op En ons vind jy die soort Kras siek en sik So ek maak sat die siek wat in soort is Maak vir sieke van jou saak Dat sy nie sieke en soort smis As ons skiet op die post is As my lied is in nops is As sy kaal vir die goeie Dan gaan die pop jou oplig Ik draai nou ook om my naar je te kom, so is iets te klein, maar dit is vir al die 
Cara, eu quero que você me fale capa do sino de TV, mas seriously. Vai dar serious. Eu vou ver se eu não 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 vou ver se eu MC, the old schools where I'm from, the scouts have raised me and kept me moving along. So I stay true to it like my dad stays true to my mom. The image of hip hop has been twisted, and what is good is not wrong. They say rap used to be strong until they fused it with porn, putting prostitutes in a song. Now guys stand up like tubes of a bomb. Looking at our female sisters as if their food is the norm. See, by exploiting the male sex drive through naked brunettes and blondes. Making sure that each dude gets turned on by hot sex and vids exposing boobs and the thong. Leaving them all too horny to wonder where the music has gone. Oh, we have maybe two questions that we have time for. Two or three questions. Anyone? Uh, I, you can answer in uh, English uh, and Afrikaans. Uh, for me, when I actually I don't have a question as such, you know, uh, it's kind of like you you kind of like of the motivator on the other side, right? Because what I've noticed, uh, I just captured the moment you mentioned that there was a time when you need to make a bid. And then there was no time for you to have money because it was costing and this and that and that. But what I like about it, about you, you couldn't just let it flow and let it go. You try to work out some other alternative. You bring your creativity so that you can be able to achieve your goal. So that means I wish all of us here as a youth of today can be able to have the same strength that you got. It. Thanks. I think we're, we're going to be, as far as I understand, discussing uh, management um, as, and, and marketing as an artist. Um, so maybe we can start with management uh, and I'll give you kind of my quick overview and then maybe Sipo will give you his. I think management is, is one of the, the biggest challenges we have within the music industry in South Africa and on the African continent. To be a manager takes a lot more than picking up a phone and booking a gig. It's a very strategic role and because our industry isn't as developed as, as other industries overseas, we find a lot of people get into management in the beginning who may be super smart, may have, you know, be well educated and have good business uh, skills, but they quickly realize that it's a very tough game and that they can make money a lot more easily in other, in other areas. So I think we lose a lot of people uh, into the other, other, other uh, parts of business because of that. Um, and to be a manager, uh, you, you really have to think out of the box. You have to understand the industry as a whole. So, you know, you have to understand exactly how publishing works, how record labels work, the whole, the whole mix. Um, you have to be a serial networker. You have to be out. You have to be able to make phone calls. And one thing people don't realize, uh, we don't realize in this country is internationally, in a, in a developed industry, there are actually different layers of management. So you will have a... Um, a, a sort of more senior manager who could be the business manager who will pick up the phone call to his connections in the, 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 the larger part of the industry and can make the deals and deal with lawyers and the kind of high-end stuff. And then you get a more day-to-day -day manager who will make sure that you get to your gig on time or that uh, he deals with the PR companies or more sort of groundwork and will be more involved in the artist. So that manager may spend four days, five days a week on you. The other business manager may spend one, two hours a week on you, but the value of that those one or two hours because of the connections that person has um, is, is extremely powerful. So I think uh, management is something that uh, is, 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 is very vacuous in, this, in our country and something that we need to focus on. And I'd encourage any of you who are interested in the music industry on the business side to, to, to upskill and to, to learn about the business. Because at the end of the day, you know, music is a creative art, but if people want to eat, it has to be treated like a business. It's income and expense. 
Uh, and if you don't have that in place, you never you can never survive. Yes, um, you've actually you've said everything I wanted to say. Sorry. So, um, yeah. sorry. So we are done. Now. <laughs> Let's go. We're not done. <laughs> no, I, I fully agree with you. Uh, I was going to exactly say that it's very challenging to manage artists, and I will tell you why. Because you are dealing with talent who has chosen a different path instead of taking an eight to five job and have a guaranteed salary. They've taken, they've given your ta their talent to you and they're asking you to make magic out of it. And they've got expectations that might not be aligned with the delivery rules. And then you sit with this talent, you can either mess it up or you can make it great out of it. And it's not the easiest thing to do. And if you ask me, would I be in this business? Would I uh, uh, um, encourage you to be in showbiz and entertainment, I will say, hell no. Get out of it as soon as you can. Because it's not as easy as you think it is. Uh, statistics will tell you that ten, two out of ten artists in any record company are successful. Which means eight that you might have, like native rhythms are just loss-making and they are angry at this because they think that we have not done enough for them. So we get into this business because we love it. But if you want to get into this business for money, you have to think twice about it because you might not make any money. And also what is said about the show is that most young people see artists on TV, they see them with videos and uh, in, in the, in, in, in the videos that the, the young man was talking about earlier on and think that, oh, these people are successful. It's just a video. That's all there is to it. And then you, 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 you want to uh, get out of school and drop out of school because you've seen Casper your vest on television, so you think he's making money. You, you drop out of school when your parents wanted you to be a doctor or anything. And then you get there and you realize that, ah, oh, it was not what I expected. Then you become an angry youth. Then you're angry at me for not making, not uh, realizing your dream. And much as I, I could have done a lot, but I can only do so much, you know. So that is just my opening statement, which I agree with Trenton that this is not the easiest business. It is also not easy because we are not selling bread. You know, bread doesn't talk back to you. <laughs> you just put in the shelves and they buy it and they eat it. You bake another bread and they eat it and that's it. The artist is going to fight with you and say, why is my song not on radio? Why am I not on television? Why am I not, I'm not being interviewed on live air? Why am I not on the third page of a, of a newspaper? And sometimes I want to tell you that uh, you actually suck. They didn't like what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have to try and find a balance to nurture the talent and not break it. And, um, but uh, this is just my opening statement, then I will come to the most case studies to make sense of what I'm saying. Over to you. Um, the other thing you have to, to be as a manager, as a psychologist, because of the, the, the emotional, sort of creative artist you deal with. But I see, my, my perception of management is that it is um, a partnership. And not enough artists go into a management situation understanding that. When people sign a management deal, they sit back and think that this manager is going to take their career and to break it. But ultimately, as an artist, you are in charge of your own destiny. And if you don't partner with a manager to make things happen, you will never move forward. Um, we had a, an incident with a, a group uh, a year or so ago that we signed. And they kept coming late to meetings. But they even came late to the meeting we had to sign the contract. And they came three hours late to a meeting one day in our office. And we sat down, myself and Tavo, and literally read them the riot act. And we were pretty hardcore. Them. And we were very straight about the fact that it wasn't about them disrespecting us, which they were clearly doing. They were disrespecting themselves as a group. And they were disrespecting themselves as individuals. Because this is a job. And when you have a job, if you're late, what happens? You get fired. So why would you come late to a gig? Why would you come late to an interview? And why would you come late to a meeting with your management team? And subsequently, the deal ended because they, they 
They were they they said they weren't ready for the pressure to be professional. And those guys had the opportunity to break. They were they were bubbling under and there was a lot of buzz about them and, and it collapsed and they and they and they are now no nowhere. So so as much as a manager has a responsibility to the artist, the artist has a responsibility to the manager. It is a partnership. So if your artist is supposed to deliver tracks at a certain time and they don't deliver them, they are letting you down as a partner. It's the same you start a business, whether it's a tourism business or your you, you deli delivery business. If people within that section that you're working with are not delivering what they're supposed to deliver, then the partnership doesn't work. And I think that's an important thing to remember. When you're looking for a manager, you're actually looking for a partner and vice versa with the uh, manager. And I guess on top of that also, you must be very hungry so for success. Because if you are not hungry for success, you are not going to make it. You know, the grouping point that everyone knows now, the soy, it's the biggest group in South Africa. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I brag about it and I'm happy to be associated with it. And I'm in a position where I can take a gig and not take a gig. But I found them having been working for seven years, trying to make it. There's a wedding, they were there. There's a party somewhere, they are there wearing a uniform and singing a cappella. That's how I met them. I went to a function in Soweto, at a community hall. There was a lot of performances. There came in these four kids. And I'm like, who are these kids singing a cappella? With wearing black and white and their jersey and with their logo here. And I said to my wife, there's something I saw in Soweto and I think it's something cooking. You know? So we found, that's why I don't want to say that we don't discover artists. We just meet at some crossroad together. We met these artists already on their path to success, and they made they wanted to make sure that they are successful. And now they are even more they are making more money than I am uh, a month. I mean, I was just getting an email now of how much they should be paid for the gigs they've done in August. Yeah. You know, we talk about big bucks. These guys are doing about six hundred thousand rands a month. Just them, just one group. <coughs> Of which us as a, as, a, as, a, as a management company, we're only taking, we're only taking 20%. Understand? We're only taking 20% of the income. When they make 600,000 rands a month, all we are making is 20%. That's the maximum we can ever make. But they are on a path and they know where they are going. You know? And one of the things that, is, and it happens a lot with hip-hop artists, this thing of romanticizing poverty. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm keeping it underground. You know, I don't want to be part of the system. Uh, I'm pushing my own stuff. You're pushing your own stuff, you're only selling 20 units a, a, a month, or, or, and then you're saying, I'm keeping it real. <laughs> I met Squatter Camp. I met Squatter Camp and I signed them. They became the biggest group. I said one thing to them do not romanticize poverty. It's not cool to be poor. This thing that you are pushing 400 units there and there, what if your album is needed in Appington and you are living in Joburg? Mm -hmm. Are you going to drive to Appington to go and sell, sell two, two albums? No. You have to work within the system as long as it works for you, you can make it work. Because the system is already there. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. You know, you can say majors and independence and whatever, but how the goods and services move within a, a creative market is already been established. Obviously there's new concepts now, there's digital and you can just keep adding on it. But you can't sit outside and say I don't have to be part of this because I'm trying to keep it real. And we signed for a camp. And they became the biggest thing. Then you find as you said, no, I wanna manage myself. You know, great friend of mine, C Paul Stixmarus, one of the most successful artists and a legend in this country. I said to him three years ago, Hostix, you are a legend. Why are you managing yourself? There's nothing right about it because you've got an eight piece band, you get off stage, they're now, oh, Brazil, oh, Brazil, oh, Brazil, when are we getting paid? You know, why do you want to engage artists, I mean, your, your musicians, about whether the, the client has paid you or not paid you? And they start complaining about why you're not paying them. You must rush to the bank to make payments. You must negotiate with everyone. And I said, if you are an artist, you must practice your craft. You must work on your calendar. They must say you've got a gig. This is the contract you have with it. You prepare, you are on stage, you perform, you engage your audience, you go home.
the manager has to deal with a lot of the, the lot of nonsense after that. They must go chase the money if they haven't gotten the money yet. They must pay your band, they must do everything. You should not be worried about running your own business. Because then that means you are not successful. You have not succeeded. You should be having people who are doing tweets for you. Thinking that it's you talking to them and yet actually it's not. I was in I was in a function one day, uh, Russell Singh was in Joba. I'm like shit. Russell is tweeting, but he's sitting here, he's not tweeting anything. <laughs> because someone is running his business. Understands the brand, understands the message, what he wants to communicate, because they've actually absorbed, they live the life of that artist. Now, us as native readings, we don't separate the album from the human being. The album is that it's just your CV, it's an extension of who you are, it's how you showcase who you are. First of all, because we are a family-run company, my wife and I run this company, we make sure that we create a family environment with the artist. They call us uh, Bagus Tall and Mamus Tall. You go to a big company, Mr. So and So, Mr. So and So, because it's so detached. They deal with you as your product, they just want to sell your album, that's it. So we try and make sure that the human being and the product that they represent is one thing. That you can understand it. And we've done that so successfully. And, and we are one of the most, we are the leading brand in, in terms of artist management and, and independent record labels. And yet we don't have money, which is the sad part. You know, but we'll deal with that later. But the perception that we have created, I mean not the perception, what we have achieved, we've, 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 we've established ourselves as a leading brand Everyone wants to come to Native Rhythms. But you can only take so many. That's just the sad reality. Every day I get WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, SMS, this email, this, we want to come to Native Rhythms. Because of the formula of firstly, respecting your talent and making sure that you don't mess it up. Because we have given it to us. There's nothing else you can do. We are, we are trusting us with us, this talent that you have. You have chosen not to do an 8 to 5 job. So we, the only thing we can do is try and make it right. And then, and then you told the line, like, like Tantin is saying, that you behave as a professional, you do what you're supposed to do as a professional. The other thing that we don't do as native, we don't work with divas. Mm -hmm. If it become too big for us, because we are good in, we, we never sign artists that are already there. We, we don't do that. We like to identify imaging talent, nurture it, groom it, and develop it. The moment you are bigger than us, and you are bigger than yourself, you are out. Whether you are making us money or you don't make us money. The soul even knows that. The day you think you're bigger than yourself and you're bigger than your audiences, and you've got money, you are free to go and live because you're going to find other artists. We've always done that over and over and over again. So those are things that we, 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 we try and do. A case in point, I'm sure you remember the biggest artist we signed in 1996 and released, Sipogas. Mm -hmm. That was our biggest first signing after we went independent, after I left Gallo Records. One day she comes to search and she comes to me and says, I'm cool. She used to call me cool as in grandpa because one of the employees that worked for us called me grandpa because uh, my brother is her grandfather. So it's, it's a cultural thing. So I also became her grandfather. That's how they popularize in Kuru and go. She says, um, I want to manage myself. I said, why do you want to manage yourself? No, because I don't think that it's good to have all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> OK. So you don't want to be an artist signed to Native Rhythms and also be managed by Native Rhythms. Yes, I don't want that. Um, how many gigs have you done in the past year? That's, that was my question to her, in the past year. Um, 100, 150, 200? And she says, yes, in that range, we could, around 200 gigs. So why do you want to fix it? I mean, break it if it's, uh, why do you want to fix it if it's not broken? No, it's just a principle that I have. Okay, fine. Then I say to her, I, I think you are making a mistake, but I'm not going to stop you. Go back and come back to me in three days. Uh, and tell you whether you still want to manage yourself. And she comes back and says, I'm cool, I've decided I'm going to manage yourself myself. <coughs> then I said, okay, fine. Now you know, uh, this is now our business model as a record company, as, as a company. If we don't manage you, 
we can't sign you. That's just a simple. We have a 360. For one reason, no one is selling records today. <coughs> so I cannot sign an artist, put 250,000 rands of recording, another 200 or 300 of marketing, and sell 8,000 units, but based on the popularity of one song, you get 200 gigs managed by 20. Mm. Taking 20% of your income, signing endorsement deals, and so forth and so forth and so forth. A, 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 a business worth millions of friends, and yet I can only hold to these 8,000 units that I've sold. And yet I've made sure that this CV is the one that makes you the money. So I then said, okay, if that is the case, we're not going to record your next album. You are free to go with the album, with everything. She left. When last did you hear about support? Later. 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 That time. Later. That time. Later. I'm not saying it's a good model. It's not a good model. Uh, well, some people might have a better solution for themselves. But what, what else can we do? I disagree. Okay. I, th I think it is a good model. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's exactly the same model we use. You know, if we are spending time and energy breaking one of our artists, we want part of the gig revenue because that's where the money is. There is very little money in recorded music. There are still artists selling units, um, but in terms of a sustainable business model, selling selling records or music is is just not a big enough revenue stream. So signing, signing a deal with a record label as an artist, you have to question yourself the validity of that because those guys can't make money and if they have a more of a 360 approach with other artists, they're going to focus more energy onto those artists. Um, and I, I agree with everything uh, Sipo is saying, so we're not going to have a fight here, so sorry. But uh, I think um, one of the things I want to talk about is the, the importance uh, for an artist to focus on their craft. We get a lot of artists to come to us who have two or three tracks and want to release. Um, often the tracks aren't ready, not, not complete. And it's so important when you're looking for any kind of deal to make sure that you craft and hone whatever you can do to the best of your ability before you put it out there. Because you only get one shot. If somebody said, we get emails all the time, like, um, hi, uh, I want a deal. I am the best hip hop artist in the world. You know, one thing I often ask uh, artists when, when, we, when we meet them is like, where, where, w where's your music? Why, why are you making music? Who's it for? And, and I get, especially from, no offense, the hip-hop guy, it's like, ah, I want to go worldwide. <laughs> I'm like, who's going to listen to you when people aren't even listening to you in your community? So I take it right back and I go, who's the first person as an artist who should be your fan? Mother. Your mother. Yeah? Your sister, your brother, your brother's friend, your sister's friend. All of a sudden it's all the girls in the school, whatever it is. You, you build at a local base first and focus on that. The other thing um, I have a, a big issue with in, 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 in our country and on the African continent is a, is a challenge our artists continually have, which comes from generations of cultural colonization, predominantly from America, and when I hear, especially hip-hop artists, sounding like Americans, breaks my soul every day. I've been on the streets of New York, and on every second corner there's a guy slinging a mixtape, and trust me, has a better American accent than any of us will ever have. And Emil talks about this, like, the, 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 the sense of self, and, and being proud of who we are. If you see some of the artists that are starting to break internationally, they have their own sound. It's unique. Why does somebody in America want to sign or work with an artist who comes from Joburg, who sounds like he's from the Bronx? It doesn't make any sense. So I think from an artist's perspective, that's a psychological barrier we continually have to break through. Because I can tell you, I've traveled a lot around the world, as I'm sure you have. And we have some of the coolest shit in this country that you can imagine. And people overseas are very, very interested. And we have some of the most incredible stories from our difficult history. And if you, you, know, if you switch on the TV or you go and watch an American movie about you know, the FBI or the CIA, it's just so boring and done. 
And we need to be proud of who we are. Because what we have is cool. And ultimately, I remember going to Miami the one time and I arrived in Miami and I was like, wow, I'm in Miami. And I was like all starry eyed and I was there for three, four days. And I started to think, I started to think about Cape Town and I was like, actually, Cape Town is actually a much more dynamic, interesting, exciting city than Miami. And then I realized that what the Americans are absolutely amazing at is marketing. They can package stuff and sell it. You know, when the whole Snoop thing came out with Dre and even the NWA, you know, half the words those guys were using in the music, we didn't have a clue what it meant. But they packaged it and they made it cool. So to anybody of you who are artists, that's what we look for, is originality. I don't want to hear something generic. I want to hear you. I want to hear somebody who, who speaks about our country, who uses local slang. So that when they go out into the world, so, you know, and I'm not saying everyone has to wear like grass skirts and play bongo drums because that's the whole world music mafia that the international market used to think. I'll tell you, I've, we, we released a compilation. I won't be long. We released a compilation. It was an African, like a chill out compilation with a hybrid of like electronica, local flavors. And we, were, we had a review in a magazine in Australia. The compilation got voted into a few uh, charts. It did quite well. But this was a world music magazine, um, magazine, and uh, the world music thing is all about traditional music. The words in this review were, this is good music to listen to if you're going down in a Boeing. Okay? And I got it. And I went to the world music mafia, and I went, you can take this, because we are going to tell you what our music is about, and no longer listen to what you think our music should be about. And that's a transition we're going through as a nation and as, a, as an African continent. So it's really important to be who you are and proud of what we have. Okay, just to then wrap up, because we need to get questions. The one part we didn't do was about the marketing. <coughs> I'm just going to do just one minute. Um, I think one thing that we have done very well is we can make a lot of noise about our artists until such time that we actually believe that they are good. That's just what we do. We just make a lot of noise. We, we, we write our own stories. Like, personally, I write the, our artists' biographies. I don't get a journalist to come and, 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 and interview an artist and say, oh, so where did you start? Did you start in church? Blah, 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 blah. Then they write an artist's biography. I write the artist's biography in such a way that the first three lines that the journalist read when I say, this is an artist we are releasing next week. They want to bring that artist to the studio for an interview because the story is so convincing. So writing your own story, writing your own biography is very, very important because only you can tell the story. I'm talking about when I say you, I mean you and your company. Don't let someone outside to write your own story. A biography is important. Your press statement, even knowing when the album is coming out. When I was at Garden, I asked one question because I didn't know anything about music industry. I'm a strategist by training. I said, when does retail get to know that there's an album coming out? Then I went to this thing backward, up to A&R, when they identify talent. Then I tried to, 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 to knit it together, because I could see there were gaps. You would find that on a Friday, this is what happens in a record company, on a Friday, all the sales team, they come back from wherever they are, because they live on a Monday with samples to go and sample radio and sample, I mean, sample um, uh, retail these releases. So they come on a Friday, having been gone for four days. Then they get briefed by the, the ANR team and say, oh, today we are releasing uh, artist so-and-so. Here is the album. It's the only time they get to know about that album. So they must now go and tell music that I've got this album. And now music must start planning to buy for it. And yet they didn't even know this album was coming six months ago. So that is how we've tried to work that six months ago, someone must know that the Soils album, as we know by now, that the Soils album is out on the 22nd of September. Guess what? Music Guy does not even have the album yet. But they've already put up in their stores that the album is coming out on the 22nd of September because we have told them that it's coming out. We've played them the snippets. And we've told the media, we've put on, on Facebook, we've put on, social, on, 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 on Twitter, we've done everything. Uh, but I'm not going to, because I want you guys to maybe want to ask more questions, then I can reference stuff. Okay. Yeah. 
Could I ask you to talk a little bit about the process of managing loyalties, um, the performance side as well as radio play, um, is that a tough nut to crack? Does the system work? Is Samno a good collecting uh, agency? The, the, the royalties are split in, in various ways. You've got your artist royalty. This is the one that you sign as yes, finger to Native Rhythms and we say we're going to give you 10% artist royalties as an artist. Then you've got the mechanical royalties and those are the, those are the, 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 the royalties in the, in the, arising out of the sale of an album from a composer who composed the song. Then you've got your public performance royalties, which is your airplay, uh, wherever it's, whether it's on the radio or in clubs and stuff, which is collected. There's collecting various collecting societies. So the record company will collect the artist royalties. They will also collect the mechanical royalties, but then they will pay it out to the publisher so that the public can pay the composers because the record company and the publisher are always separate. Then you do have the, the, the samros. Now, samro is even more important than any other thing, for one reason. You might have a song that is not even released, but it's playing on air. It's playing in Vietnam, in Australia, in Tanzania, in South Africa. Now, you need a, collecting, a, a public performance collecting agency that represents, that can collect for you anywhere else in the world. And that's why it's important that uh, when you compose a song, even if it's not done yet, you go and notify someone before anyone steals your idea. So this is my song, it sounds like this, the melody and everything. When it's done, and then it's doing its own work out there, then that part is, 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 is discovered. But then you also find, uh, comes like a RISA, with this, who negotiate also directly with the, with the broadcasters in terms of the, 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 the TV, the airplay arising out of your videos. They also would make that um, uh, an agreement between them. Sandro, for instance, negotiates about 100 million rands with SABC. I used to be head of strategy at SABC, so I, I know a bit about how some of these things went. Sandro negotiates about 100 million rands in what is called a blanket license. That blanket license basically means they can play any music for that period. SABC will, will pay them 100 million rands. They will run their um, whatever formula to see whose song got played the most, whose song got played less. So you might have a song where you only get two cents for that pay period, but there's someone who's getting three million because that song was played so much. Unfortunately, in this country, most of the money goes and leaves the country because the, uh, the, the quota system is not in favor of South Africans by our own government, black rule and everything. Now, then people go and, bl and blame Samro and say Samro is, 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 is selling 80% uh, of, the, of, of the money out of the country, except that Samro can only play, pay to the rightful owners of that. And, but we can, I don't know if there was any specific particular question around that. Yeah, I'd like to come in at that point. So basically, what we need to be doing is we need to push government uh, to raise the quota. So ICASA, ICASA offers a license to any broadcaster. Part of the mandate is that you have to play a certain percentage of the local content. So two things are happening. The quota is too low, A, and then B, broadcasters, radio, specifically, they will fudge that quota. They'll repeat stuff, they'll, yeah. they'll do all sorts of things. Payola, all of these different things kick in. So the, the quota isn't being enforced. So it sounds to me, well this isn't Samro's problem specifically, but it sounds to me like artists and, and people linked to Samro, um, what is the artist organization called uh, linked to Samro? Um, well, well no, there's, there's POSA. Uh, yes, POSA. Yes, yes, yes. There's that's, that's what I'm talking about. Paso, there's only, yeah. Yeah, there's so basically, artists need to get together and actually push the CASA to, to do two things. The existing quota, enforce it and to be strict about it and penalize broadcasters for not respecting that. And then the second thing is raise the quota. Mm -hmm. So even if, I mean the quota is low, what is the quota? 20? You know, for com public commercial radio, I think it's now about 30 something. 30. And I know we public, don't hear that uh, much. Uh, radio is about uh, 50 something. 
but also what you just said, when the radio cooks the system, they say we are playing local content, 70% local content. But all they are playing is quiet in the house. Mm -hmm. They are not playing the vendors, the songers, the baby, all of this kind of thing. And I, 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 exactly, I did the, the, the music policy for SABC. It never saw the light of day. Where it, I wanted to make sure that if you are a black Zulu radio station, you then should be playing Mbakana, Statamia, and all of this, and then add others. Not where a station, everyone, they sound like Metro FM. Mm. You know, mm. they're all playing big nas and they say it's local, it's, 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 it's local content. So, and by the way, just to add, there's a white paper right now issued by ICASA where they are now asking for comments because this is the only opportunity now that you can influence the revision of the code. Will they do that? We don't know. But I think it's also, it's also a, a change in, in mindset for us as consumers. Because with, with media becoming more on demand, when, when how many of you go onto YouTube on a regular basis? Okay, when you go onto YouTube, you have a choice whether to watch an international artist or a local artist. When you watch the international artist, the money that comes from the ads that are all over YouTube now drive me mad. Um, that money goes out of the country. It's the same when you when you go and watch uh, an international artist who comes out to perform here. Most of that money, or a large percent of money, leaves the country. Where you when you so so as a consu as consumers we also need to invest more in our artists. Mm. I, I think the quota thing is, is quite an interesting topic because um, I think one of the things is, as our industry matures, we we are still quite fragmented as an industry. We're very fragmented by genre and, and location and as we as we mobilize and become more together as an industry and as our industry starts to expand internationally, I think we'll be in a more powerful position to deal with things like this more proactively. Do we have time to talk about needle time? Because I don't want to start the time shot. Once we start talking about needle time, it becomes a huge, huge problem. Um, this is a big problem. I mean, just a very, very quick one. The needle time issue has not been resolved. Um, I was at Moshita, was it two years ago? There was a huge punch up. DTI itself was not very useful, even though I think it has been constructive or it has tended to be constructive. So, needle time is an issue that needs to be resolved, and people here need to make sure that they understand what that is. I have written about it myself, uh, a few people. Um, go online and check that out. The other thing is royalty is the best thing that any artist can do is to register with Samro to find out how Samro works and then to actually build that relationship. There was a time people were complaining about Samro. I think it has changed to a certain extent. Um, Samro's online presence is great. It assumes that everybody in the country has great online access. That is something to push them on. Um, but they are a responsive organization. Um, there's an alternative. I just want to plug this as well. For those of you who do have an online presence, I know that you drop your your EPs, etc., etc., you use SoundCloud and all of these different platforms, make sure that you understand how alternative licensing work works, specifically creative comments. Whatever you put out there, don't just put a, a, a C with a, with, a, with a circle around it. Look at alternatives, look at creative, creative comments as well as protecting your, 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 your material, but allowing for it to go viral, to encourage it to go viral. You need for your stuff to go viral. You need people to share, to pass it on. And a creative commons license is a very lawyer-free way of understanding copyright <coughs> and then be allowing people to to circulate your stuff without cutting your hands off in the process. Uh, we saw a hand on the left here somewhere. Right, on the right as well. Yeah, there's, there's one there. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not uh, the chief. I, I won't belong. I'm not the chief. Yeah, I, I have a, a question. Uh, you know, for someone maybe, that just someone that you just signed, you see, maybe, um, and his album didn't live up to expectations. And you know, for, for someone who is coming from nowhere and is trying to make a name for himself, so how do you motivate that person to keep on going, maybe, despite not making the sales? Yes. You know, the good example is, I think, WHP. I think WHP got successful on his fifth album. Uh, that's just, uh, sometimes you just have to keep, keep pushing. I, I make an example about that. I signed Mr. Selby some time ago. And Mr. Selvin's album was not selling at Gala, was at Gala. And I called him, and I could see that he was losing his, uh, you know, 
Yes. Yeah. And I said to him, Sally, your album hasn't sold, right? But I want to tell you, do not sign it to sell your album. We signed you to document our heritage. Whether it works or it did not work, it's not lost. So don't walk in the corridors and feel like you have disappointed your company. That's not the issue. I don't sign artists to say, I sign to record and document our history. Guess what happened? Two weeks later, the same album won the summer. And what if I had not told him that? He would have come back and said, you see, my album is one in summer and you guys don't even respect me in this company. <laughs> but it just so happened that I thought that I should tell him this, that don't worry, we're going to keep on pushing until it works. Sometimes we don't even release an album if we see that that album is not going to work. You send out a song to, to, to radio, they don't feel it. You send it, you get funny comments, we pull it out. There's an artist whose album has been finished two years ago at Native Rhythms. It's never seen the light of day, don't even know about it. You know? That's just that's how sometimes it works. Because we are trying to, to, to protect you sometimes from being destroyed uh, emotionally. So we will pull it and hold it and work it again and then push it out and see what happens. Thank you. Oh, that's better. Okay. Um, most of the question, most of the answers was one of the questions I'm going to ask. Now I'm going to move on. Um, what I want to know in terms of, we made the comment about the media playing an important role in terms of marketing our, our artists. Um, I've seen this happen with the Nigerian artists. They're not that great, but what has happened is that they push their music through. I don't know whether they get funding for it or not, but they made sure that every piece of, the, of every corner in the, each country, their music gets heard. That's why we fell in love with their music afterwards, and it, it just happens. So what happened to South Africans, if I don't like what Jersey is doing, I would definitely move over to the American um, hip hop because it's hip hop. So what we're trying to do is that we make comparison between South Africans and the international um, artists, and we put a lot of pressure on our um, national, um, our local artists because we compare them to the um, international, which is which them are well funded and they are more out, out there and they are well known. So for us, if we stick to what we know and stick what we do best and make sure that the craft that we're creating is the best that will suit the South African public and later on move perhaps to an international stage. I think if we begin there, then it could work very well. We have a much bigger problem. We have a much bigger problem. We have to heal the hood. <laughs> that is the problem. You know, why Nigerians are so successful? They are comfortable with their own skin. Yes with their own lingo, with their own language, with their own culture, with their own music, and they've made it cool, and they've pushed it out. That's what they've done. South Africa needs, needs a national conscientization, identity and pride. We need to find out first, who are we? Once we know who are we, then we go and tell the world that this is who we are. Now, that is why music in this country can't even say, what is, South, what is the South African sound? You can't. But now, you can already hear Nigerian sound, as we are sitting here, you can already hear it. Because it's out there and they are leaving it and they are pushing it. And they've created a market that is sustainable inside Nigeria. Yes. And it's creating millions and millions of, of Nairas. Yeah. Mm. You know? That is the biggest problem we have in this country, but it's going to be a long time, it's going to take generations. <laughs> and that's why I, was sort of just, I always like to come to Cape Town, because when I'm, when I'm in Cape Town, I get a sense that there is this journey of self-actualization, of saying, you might not know about us there in Job or whatever, but here we've got it together, and we are trying to make it work. And I was listening to the soundtrack that was played during the break, I was like, my goodness, this is where I want to